Hello, this is Raphael Freeman from Running Our Typesetting, and today we're going to talk about balancing. What is balancing? How do we do it? So, first and foremost, let's define what it is. Balancing is quite simply the process by which we make sure that the recto, the right hand page of the book, and the verso of the spread are the same length. It's as simple as that. How do we do it? It's a little bit more work. Now we have three mechanisms by which we can use in order to achieve this. The first mechanism that we have is to lengthen or shorten the page accordingly. Now it is better to make sure that if you're going to shorten the spread that the following spread isn't lengthened by a line because you're going to have a two line difference. But as long as we've only got a up to a line difference between the spreads, this works quite well. So this is going to be our first mechanism. Our second mechanism is if we have spaced paragraphs like we do here, we've got space before Friday night meal, we've got 30 points and we have 15 points here, we can increase the spacing proportionally in order to get to where we need to get to. So that's a second mechanism. And the third mechanism that we have is we can either take a paragraph such perhaps as this one and increase the tracking. That means we imagine all the letters are on a, an elastic band and we pull that elastic band. We're increasing the space between both the words and the letters. And also conversely, we could contract we can do negative tracking. It's actually the mechanism that I prefer. Now, of course, if we're going to track a paragraph, we have to make sure that we don't have one paragraph tracked positively and then the next one tracked negatively. And this is the, the, the third mechanism that we have. And it's quite slow to find the right paragraph, but this is what we have. So let's see what we're going to do here. Now, I have to admit that I obviously tried this out beforehand and it failed, but we're still going to go through the process anyway, because I think it's useful to see how it works. So the first attempt is I'm taking the going to the rector and I'm going to increase the text box by just enough space to, to uh, make sure it's less than one line. I'm going to switch on the baseline grid. The baseline grid will show us what one line is. So, so that worked quite nicely. So my next attempt would be to increase the base, the, the box, the text box by the same amount that's been increased here and say, well, OK, let's increase the spacing. Now I want to make sure it's proportional. That means if I've got a full line here, well, not quite a full line, but I've got about a line. OK, you can see the X, I've got this amount of space. So if there's 15 points here and there's 30 points here, then add one third here and add two thirds here. So I have a little script that does that as well. And I've done that and the book is the spread is balanced, but it's not so good. This amount of space that's been added here and here, it's, it's too much. It doesn't look good. So that's really not going to be um, our solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo that spread and we're going to actually undo that and we're going to take a look at it again. And what I'm doing is I'm just resetting the boxes to the right place. So I'm going to now say, well, the spacing didn't work. Let's see what would happen. Maybe if I could decrease the space and I'm thinking, eh, that's not going to look so nice here. So maybe let's do a bit of tracking. So I've just tracked this paragraph by five and it didn't solve my problem. So I'm going to just highlight a bunch of text and see if, Doing anything by five will help, and it doesn't. And decreasing by five, no, that doesn't either. So I'm thinking, huh, that's not so good. So let's now do two spreads, and we're not getting any joy here. And no, we're not getting any joy either. Now, I don't like to go past five. So if I don't manage to do this within five, I'm going to start thinking again. And what I'm thinking right now is that what would happen here is if I were to actually decrease this by one line, by, by a full line. You see the pink is the, the, the margins and then the blue is the text box. So I've got it here. And what would happen if I were just simply to perhaps even look at this box here. Now I could draw a horizontal rule down here, but I actually have a faster way of doing it. I could just simply I'd run a little script. So now I've made this text box the same as this. What would happen if I were to now increase the space here? 
So I've now added quite a bit of space and I see here now it's too much space. So I'm going to undo that. What happens if I were to decrease the space here and here? So I'm going to decrease it by not too much. I don't really want to go quite as much as that. So I'm actually going to just make it go onto the line. And you see now the text is sitting on the baseline grid. So now I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to increase that by uh, almost the full line here. And you know what? It's not perfect, but it's not bad. So I've now balanced the spread. And as you can see, it doesn't take a second. It's a little bit of work. And I'm going to go to the next spread. Now the next spread looks very different, okay? So as you can see, we've got like we had Friday night meal here. We've got this Shabbat lunch and we've got romantic love. And we've got all this laid down. We've also got this section here. So here I wouldn't work too hard. I would see that the recto um, finishes where it finishes and I will simply make the verso the same length as that. Now we have quite a bit of space before there's hearing your own voice so I don't mind adding a little bit more. And now we've balanced the spread. And I'm going to go to the previous spread and remind myself how much space I left. There was a full line short. So this being less than a full line short is perfectly fine. And then I go to the next spread. And again, this spread is also relatively straightforward. This is falling half a line short. This is always going to happen whenever you whenever the design dictates half a line before and half a line after an extract, this text here is considered to be extract, you're always going to risk that on occasion there's going to be a full line because the, the opposite page may well just be straight text. Here there happens to be this hearing your own voice. In fact, what I could do here is I could decrease here the space by 0.75 and it would be the same length and, and that actually is, is, a, is a good good solution as well. Um, now here I notice that I have a bit of a strange thing, I have quite a bit of space here and I jump to the next page and I see that this is why, I've got this hearing your own voice again, it's these sections. Now looking at this, this spread here, this is a new chapter, this Friday Night Mills, it's a new chapter here so I don't have to worry about this enormous amount of space here, that's perfectly fine. Here it's not so great. It's not the end of the world, but it's not amazing. So I'm going to see if I can make it a little bit better. So again, I'm going to employ the mechanism of increasing this. I've increased it by just amount, of, just the right amount of space. Again, it's a script that's doing this, um, such that the bottom of the frame um, is the same. Um, and then I can go to my recto, add the same amount of space, and then increase the space. And now we get to the next page. Again, this enormous space here, because you're not sure what I'm referring to, I'm referring to this enormous space here. That's perfectly okay. It's the end of a chapter. So that's perfectly fine. Now, so far I haven't done any text massaging, which is quite good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I prefer not to massage the text. So we're going to now look at the next paragraph, next chapter. Again, very short chapters. This one is falling on a recto, which is a more traditional place for an opening chapter. If you have a chapter that's lasting 10, 15, 20 pages, you should really try and have your chapters opening on a recto. Obviously, though, very short chapters, it makes less sense, particularly in a book of this size. So I'm going to increase the length of that page. And now I have a more typical kind of page. Now, I could say it's fine, because if we look on the next spread, this hearing your voice up here, it's a new section. So I don't have to worry. So I'm looking at the spread, and I know that I can leave it as is. And it would be okay. It wouldn't be the end of the world. Can I make it any better? Well, let's try. If I make it a line longer, that's going to increase the amount of space here. If I go to the, the, the page before, I've gone a little bit, the page is a little bit long by a smidgen, so I can ignore that. So let's now see what would happen if I make it shorter. Huh, that's interesting. Now making it shorter, will, well, I could make it look a bit nicer. Watch what would happen if I now make the verso the same length as the recto, and then increase the space. So I'll have a full line space here. That doesn't bother anybody. And I've now balanced this page. Again, because the next page was a new section, I didn't have to balance it. It was, as it were, fine. 
but I don't think it does any harm. It's a little bit more attractive. Now this page is a little bit more classic. It's a classic problem. And this will happen more in a regular kind of novel. I'm not quite sure what this random vertical rule is doing. But let's get rid of that. And what we've got here is it's not balanced. And the reason why it's not balanced, it's interesting to look at this, is because if this line here would go down to here, then we would only have these three words at the top of the line. And when you have the last line on the page at the top of a book, this is called a widow. Okay, now widows are never desirable. They're, they're considered to be incorrect in typesetting. Now, Yan Chi Hol, the famous typographer of the 20th century, actually has no problem with a widow if the running head had, let's say, a rule underneath, so that the, the, the page makeup would, would be fine. I personally don't like a widow ever. I know some publishers don't mind a widow if it's more than half a line. I don't really understand the logic of that. So that's a widow. So because I've set InDesign to never allow a widow, then it has made this page fall short. Whilst we're talking about widows, it's, it's actually a good idea to mention orphans. And there's a big debate with widows and orphans because there's some confusion. So the widow, as we've defined, is when you have the last line of a... I'll actually show you what it is. I'm actually going to get rid of the... Um, uh, the prevention of the widow. So that is called the widow. That is not allowed. We don't allow widows. Okay, so we don't have widows. So what is an orphan? So an orphan is when you have the first line of a paragraph. I'm just going to quickly look for one here. So if we look um, this spread that we've done, this line is called an orphan. And there is nothing wrong with an orphan. Orphans are fine. We don't mind orphans, okay? Um, and um, why we don't mind orphans, I don't know. Um, there's an expression that says Wid widows um, uh, have no past, but orphans have a future, or something like that. So anyway, so this is an orphan. When do we not want to have an orphan? We wouldn't want the first line. You see here, there's a, this is what we call an extract. We would prefer if the paragraph after an extract was indented. You see here this paragraph here? So let's say it was indented. This paragraph is not indented, but let's say it was. We wouldn't want that to be an orphan. We want that to be over here because a person reading it would not would be confused as to whether it was a continuation of the extract. If the first par the paragraph following an extract and it has an orphan, was not indented, let's say it was this particular paragraph and it happened to be at the bottom of a page, it wouldn't be a big problem, okay? Now, as you can see from the process of balancing, that if you did not have orphans, the process of balancing would be probably be impossible. Um, and to, again, quote Yan Chi Hold, it, it would be wishful thinking. Um, so we don't mind that. So here, that's the problem here. And also, it's uh, a little bit... Uh, the, 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 page doesn't fit exactly on the baseline grid. So that's why this isn't falling, but we don't have to worry too much. We can simply shorten the page by one line. Uh, we had the previous page short by one line, so we've now balanced the spread. Um, and, and we continue throughout the book. I'm just going to just do it here. This page, this spread happens to already be balanced. And again, it's the end of the chapter. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the next chapter and very quickly go through it. I'm actually doing this live. This is a real book. I have not done this before. Um, and I'm going to now look at it here again. Similar situation before. I've got three lines here. I'm going to play a little bit. So here I've tracked it by five. I'm going to try tracking it by one, two, three, four. Okay, that gives me an extra line. And then now what I can do is I can simply shorten this by one line and we've now balanced it. So here we have, um, as you can see, we have an orphan here. Nothing wrong with the orphan. Okay, as long as we don't have any widows. By the way, some people get confused and call whilst we're talking about widows and orphans. Uh, call a widow an orphan, and they call an orphan what we call a runt, a typographic runt or a stub end. Uh, well, that's when you have a very, the last word of the line is very short and fits within this square. You see, we have a, 
but actually here it's a rectangle, okay? But this width here, I'm going to choose pink again. I like pink, right? So if, if the last word had been B, full stop, then that would have been shorter than this space here, and that would be called a typographical runt. So if you look on uh, on the internet, if you Google what widows and orphans are, you will get both um, definitions. If you look in any professional typesetting book, you will only get the one definition. Um, so here we've here we've now done this very nicely by simply just needed a smidgen less spaces, that 0.75 um, that, that put that off slightly. Um, and here, I'm not sure we can do too much about it. Ah, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire paragraph. I'm going to negatively track it. I need just actually just by one. And I'm going to now negative track that by one. And I'm, I was hoping that that would be enough to bring up. And I just in increased that by one line. So here, a combination, and I can actually show this in the new latest version of InDesign. This bright blue shows that I've tracked it. So here, by negatively tracking this paragraph and this paragraph we've managed to get another line in um, and now I have to see if that's going to help because uh, now I've solved this problem of extra space here but now I've got the extra space here so I'm actually going to go ahead and undo this because it's not actually helping us so I'm going to go back to where we were before uh, make the make the paragraph short I'm going to have that extra space I could go back and I'm going to now look at this now and shorten this by a line and I'm just wondering if that would help me so that helps me a little bit by shortening the spread before by a full line then it decreases the space somewhat um, we're only sh we're short four lines here I think that's okay I think in terms of the reader that's fine and that's what we're going to leave it as that's that's really all we can do here I would prefer to have the extra space here on the verso and then uh, the reader will understand that's because we've got this hearing or voice on the recto than having the extra space here um, and not understanding what why it's gone. Um, not overly keen on the two lines that I'm going to just try and get a little bit more here. Of course, that's giving us a difference of four lines, but I think that's nicer now here. So that gives you some kind of an introduction, quite a long introduction. As you saw, we didn't do that many pages. I was doing it live. It took me about 15 minutes to do those few pages. So the process of balancing is quite a slow process. But if you want to have a polished book, it is important. But it is also the reason, and this is quite crucial, why this process is done right at the end when there are no more corrections because if you come back now and say oh can you add a line here or delete a word here it could dramatically change the balancing i would have to start all over again um, i used a number of scripts um in, in this in this video uh, we've actually launched a sister site called runnerscripts.com and uh, hopefully over the coming months, we're going to start uh, putting some of those scripts up there, some as freebies, some as paid scripts um, to help you. And if you have any questions or want any direct help, always feel free to comment me. You can put a comment in, in, in the, uh, you can write a comment below and I will respond as quickly as possible. Um, or you can get hold of me directly. My website is www.runnerntype.com.